The Red Army. Uh, they, uh, they're playing really well and they play with a lot of confidence. You know, it starts up front, their, their offensive lines, uh, you know, a lot of big butt and big legs and come off the ball and work really well together. Um, you know, they've got great skill, speed and length at the wide receiver position. Uh, I think a couple weeks ago I commented on the depth of the running backs at Georgia. Well, this group's every bit as deep as that. And, uh, you know, I think the uh, Harris is averaging over nine yards a carry. And then, oh yeah, by the way, they got a quarterback who runs as well as any running back that you play against as well. Uh, he's improved a lot, I think, from last year. He throws the ball much better. And, uh, you know, there aren't a lot of weaknesses. They, they run the ball well, they throw the ball efficiently, and um, uh, they don't turn the ball over, and they don't make a lot of mistakes. So you're thinking shut out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, I mean, uh, it, you know, we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to play really, really well. We'll have to, you know, we'll have to play well. Uh, was that maybe the one missing ingredient that offense? had or didn't have in the past with someone like her to even when you scheme it up right and even when you get him blocked up he can go make a, a play on a scramble or something that seems to have taken an already good situation and made it better for them. yeah and, and I've said that before I mean the defense coordinator's nightmare is uh you know a dual threat quarterback you know of his quality he, he certainly makes plays you know in design quarterback runs he did that last year against us and he's done that against a lot of teams but um but you're exactly right when it's third down and you feel like you've got the play covered and you've done everything right and your rush lane integrity breaks down just a, just a little bit. You know, he has the ability to make plays with both his arm and his feet, and he does an excellent job with that. So I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and, uh, and, and their group. Seems like their backs come in different shapes and sizes, but all pretty strong guys. But what do you think of that backfield? Uh, <laughs> you know, you, know you, you, could, you could do a survey of the defensive staff room, and probably each one of us has a different favorite guy. You know, I mean, Harris is as much proved as any, uh, improved as anybody, you know, in the country. They said he lost a little bit of weight. He's leaner. He's faster. I mean, the, the first play against Arkansas, he took off, made a great cut, has great vision for a 75-yard run. I still can't get Scarborough's run here last year out of my head, you know. And, and uh, uh, all those guys are really, really talented players. And, and that, that's what, that's, you know, I know you guys asked Coach today about the second half a little bit on defense, and that's I think the. That's the area that we need to continue to improve upon, you know, our consistency in our style of play, but also uh, continuing to develop um, uh, quality depth, you know, probably on both sides of the ball, but I'm specifically talking about the defense. You know, and that's, you know, I think we've played pretty good at times on defense, you know, to be very honest. I mean, not, I don't necessarily think, like I said, we're the, the Bears or anything, 80, 85 Bears or anything like that, but I think the guys have played pretty well. We've had good gap control. You know, we played well against Florida at times. We played really well against, uh, um, you know, UMass. We played really well against Georgia at times. We played really well this weekend at times. But we haven't sustained the level of consistency never necessary to win at the highest level. And there comes that point maybe in the middle of the third quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter, where you see a little bit of a drop off in, in execution and whatnot. And we've talked about playing guys earlier in the game, especially up front. And we've talked about, but the, the key is this though, you know, like I said to someone, a player always says, play me and I'll show you. And a coach says, show me and I'll play you. And that's, you know, we need those guys, we need to practice. You know, the guys who want to play need to practice at a really, you know, we consider a good level to, for us to have, be confident to put them into the game. On that note, where does kind of things stand with Will Ignat right now? Where, 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 where's his development from the beginning? You had kind of envisioned yeah. a, a potential role for, on him. Or yeah, he, him there's a good him. example. I mean, he's played a lot on special teams. You know, and I don't, you know, I thought Jumper probably wasn't as productive this week as, as he'd been, but he's still the quarterback of the group, and he does a great job managing and running the whole group. And I thought Corte Saps played really, really well the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, Ignat practices with the twos. Batuli gets reps in that group too. And uh, Elliot Berry, Dylan Bates, those guys are in the mix, and they're on the squad, and they're contributing in different ways on special teams. But that, that's a fairly good example. I mean, but guys, obviously last week we were handcuffed a little bit without Taylor up front. And the ends probably had to play a few more snaps than, than we would have wanted them to. But uh, but Matt Butler got some snaps, and DeAndre Johnson was also out last week, so that really kind of handcuffed those guys. But Paku did play inside. Alexis Johnson played a little bit inside. But you know, you know, we've talked about that as a defensive staff trying to get you know guys specifically up front in the game a little earlier. And we did talk today about Austin Smith playing too, because the team we're playing this week is very big. We need big. Coach we need to be big and strong. Guys. What are you guys getting from Rashawn right now? And oh. is it a is he going unheralded a little bit? I don't know. Not by me, he's not. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, like, look at it or anything. I, I did see some today. Pro Football Focus ranked him. You know, 
you know, his, uh, I don't know, quarterback efficiency on throws against him is really, really, really good for Rashawn. But uh, he did. He was great last week, I thought. His effort, his style of play, you know, he, whether it's in coverage, whether it's blitzing off the edge, you know, it's, you know, if we're a basketball team, you try to get some of your players' touches. And against a team like Alabama, you know, we we're sitting there saying, all right, who are the players that, what are the good matchups? And we keep thinking about Nigel, we think, thinking about Rashawn, you know, guys like that who, who are athletic enough and tough enough and have that edge to them, you know, to play against this group. So, you know, Rashawn's going to be, he's going to be a key component in this week's game plan for certain. Could he pr play pretty much any spot in the secondary for you, you know, in a pinch if he well, was able to practice and get coached up there? Is yeah, the skill set you know, he played, play? he played corner in the um, Georgia Tech game, which was unusual, I mean, obviously, um, and did very well there. Um, he's played both safety positions. He's played the nickel. And now with some of the injuries we've had to safety, you know, he's, he's repped there and he's prepared to do that. It was good to see Evan, just so you guys, Evan Berry was out there today, so that was really good. And we certainly could use him the second half of the year. He's an explosive athlete who can play against these really good teams as well. So, but uh, Rashawn's been, yes, whoever said unheralded, I mean, I, I know maybe right now, whatever our record says we are, and maybe our you know, defensive statistics are somewhat middle of the road, but there's a guy who I think day in, day out, week in, week out, has played at an exceptionally high level and deserves any recognition that he receives. Will DeAndre do that? Guys. Pardon? Will, will DeAndre play this week? Do you know yet? To be determined, I'm not 100% sure. You talk about the depth issues. That get accentuated with, with Alabama. They could just run so many great players. Well, that's the league. I mean, that's, you know, and, and I mean, you know, Injuries are a part of everything, and we do have some injuries. And obviously, we've had Daryl suspended for the, you know, for as long, you know, to be determined. But uh, and we've never hidden from that. It's the next man up mentality, and that's what it will always be. And I won't accept anything less. And and when you go out there, it's your opportunity to play. Like, you know, Schamberger may have to play more this week than he's played. We've talked about that. Balaam Buchanan deserves an opportunity to play a little bit too. So, you know, uh, yes, I mean, Alabama is as as deep. On probably both sides of the ball as any team. I haven't. I talked to Larry, and Larry said they'll come. There's some third downs. They'll run eight and nine new guys in there. And you watch some of the teams. I think Georgia was similar. You know, on pass downs, they'll put three or four different D linemen in there. We've had to be creative with that, and that's, you know, it just is what it is. And 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 you try to maximize the, the chess pieces that you have and put them in, put the individuals that you have in the best place for them and for your unit to be successful. I'll take one more. Notice you didn't have Batuli in the, at the end of the game. Is that more your faith in Corte and Colton? Because it was obvious they were going to run the football there. Or um, Daniel just not having. He a wasn't good in. Game? And he was in. On, he was in on the long series. That was the series that was. Uh, that was the one that was most disappointing. I think we wore down a little bit. That's that's when you saw it. I mean, we, disappointing. We had him backed up, and uh, we had him do a third and one, and then we misfit a run play. But he was in at the beginning of that series, and then uh, uh, and then, like I said, I. I, I know you guys all bust my chops, but uh, but I, I I have a lot of confidence in Colton, and I thought Corte played really really well, and it wasn't in any way, shape, or form an indictment of Daniel Batuli, as it was maybe a uh, uh, you know Col Colton's our leader, and go do the job, and he, you know I'll say it again for two and a half three quarters we we played we played really pretty solid defense. We just need to do a better job and finish the games. I, I use the first thing I said to the defense today is when's good not good enough when better is required. And that that's that's what the, the deal was. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.